be part of this special carol service here at Calvary Baptist. My name is Steve, and, and together we are the choir, the, the mass choir. Now, Calvary has a, a choir that's going to sing, but all of us are a choir giving praise to God. Let's begin with, O come, all ye faithful. We'll stay seated so you can see the words. If we stand up, those in the back won't see them. So relax, and let's sing to the Lord. that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. We pray that you will receive our singing as worthy worship in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 96. Verses 1 through to 3. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all the peoples. Amen. Amen. Good news needs to be declared. Go tell it on the mountain.
risen, that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and singing. Well, you can rest your vocal cords for a moment because Calvary's choir is coming up here, and we're, they're going to sing about what is Christmas. Now, if you went out on the street, everyone knows about Christmas, right? Because it, you can't miss it. All the stores are decorated. It's all over the place. We've got specials coming up on television with carols in the domain and then the carols down in Melbourne on Christmas Eve. Christmas, it's a big deal, isn't it? And the retailers are hoping that they'll cash in during all of this, but what really is Christmas about? You've already got an idea, but just humor me by letting the choir answer, okay? Here we go. What is Christmas? Christmas. Christmas, Christmas, what is Christmas? Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Shoppers scampering, families visiting, budgets stretching, with Santa's hastening, candy nibbling, people fattening, there's no sense in dieting. What is Christmas? Christmas. Christmas, Christmas, mistletoe, holly, Santa Claus, jolly, no geometry, partridge in a pear tree, riding on a snow cloud, dashing through the snow now, stockings are hung by the Christmas. What is Christmas? Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Take a vacation from education for relaxation. Try hibernation, cut by inflation. Give a donation. Look at the bright decorations. What is Christmas? Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. What is the big gift under the tree? No one will tell. I hope it's for me. I'll Christmas. get a glimpse much Christmas. later tonight. I'll Christmas. take a peek after Christmas. midnight. What is Christmas? Christmas. Christmas. Christmas.
song, you might have wondered, can they do any melodies? <laughs> Thank you, choir. Hark the herald angels sing. Your turn. Let's all sing together. Second birth, part the herald angels. 
We are looking this afternoon at the gospel record from Matthew, the record, the history of when Jesus was born. Ben, would you come read for us, please? So today's second reading will be from the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which, being interpreted, is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. That is good news, isn't it? Good Christian men rejoice. in a name. That passage that Ben read for us revealed two names for Jesus. Did you catch them? His name shall be called Jesus. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. Just as we, we say, Christ was born to save. Jesus. That name means Jehovah saves. He is our Savior. And he saves us from our sins. The second name that Ben read to us was Emmanuel. You will call him Emmanuel. And what does Emmanuel mean? The text said, God with us. That's right. I, I see uh, many of you know the answer and you gave the answer. That's right. God with us. Think of that. It'll get your brain all in knots. That's beyond our understanding but we accept it as fact because the scripture declares it God the eternal the omnipotent the omnipresent God 
became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Two names, Jesus, he's the Savior. Emmanuel, he is God. But there's a third name in Matthew chapter 1. It begins with these words. The genealogy or the genesis of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And you will notice throughout the New Testament, those two names often are together. Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ. What is the meaning of Christ? Well, that's the Greek word for the Hebrew word Messiah, which means he is the anointed one. Well, who was anointed in the Old Testament? Well, prophets were anointed, priests were anointed, but chiefly kings were anointed. He is Christ the King. He is the King. The wise men came to worship Jesus and they presented three gifts. What were those gifts? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is fitting for a king. Those wise men, though Gentile in their ethnicity, knew enough that this child who was born is the king. In fact, they said so much when they were asking around Jerusalem, where is the king? Interestingly, as we'll see a little later in the service, it was Herod, the pagan king Herod, who said, where is he who is born Christ? Christ means king. Gold befitting for a king. Is he your king? Kings reign. They have control. And their subjects submit to them, bow before them, obey them. Do you obey Jesus? Do you subject yourself to him? That's the fitting response, isn't it? And this afternoon, that's what we're doing. We're expressing our worship to him because he is the king. Let's sing joy to the world, the Lord is come. shepherds the coming of Christ who was born that night. Angels we have heard on high. They really sing out those glorias, okay?
shepherds of saying that carol, the first Noah. Oh, winter's 
In the psalm there, Psalms, there is a statement, the Lord is my shepherd. Which psalm is that in? 23, that's right, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. In the New Testament, that's expanded upon. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. It's also said in the New Testament that he is the great shepherd because the great shepherd rises from the dead. And it is said in the book of 1 Peter that he is the chief shepherd for the chief shepherd comes for his sheep the second time. The Lord is my shepherd. Think about that as the choir sings about the shepherd. If you have your Bibles and you want to follow along, we continue with the historical record from Matthew chapter 2, and I'll invite Lim to come and read these verses to us. Our third reading this afternoon is found in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came three wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard this, these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judea art not the least among the princes of Judea, of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called 
the wise men inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. This is the word of the Lord. At that point in time, the people of Israel were not politically free. They were occupied by the Romans and ruled over by Herod, who was an Idumean and a tyrant. The Roman emperor was no better. And for a few hundred years, there had been silence in terms of revelation. It had been at least 400 years since Malachi had given the last recorded prophecy. Israel was in bondage politically, but most importantly, in bondage spiritually. And we are too. We are born into sin. We are sinners by nature, and we're sinners by choice. And that sin consigns us to bondage. We need a savior, just as they needed a savior. And those who are aware <coughs> cry out to him. And there were many in the Old Testament that cried out for the coming of Messiah who expected it. We have the record in the book of Luke of Simeon, who was eagerly anticipating the coming of the Messiah, and also Anna. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Will you sing that song with me? men brought gold 
Because Jesus is the king and he is worthy of gold. He is worthy of us being his subjects. What's the second gift that they gave? Gold and what? Frankincense. Frankincense. What was frankincense used for in the Old Testament? It was used as an accompaniment to the sacrifice. The sacrifices that were made because of the sinfulness of the people. Frankincense was mixed with the sacrifice. And that gift speaks to what is required for your sin and my sin to be removed. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no removal of sin. And so it can truly be said that Jesus was born to die. And the motions of that death were already active on the day he was born. For as Lim read to us earlier, the wise men came following the star. They were eager. They were seeking Jesus, seeking the Savior, seeking the King, the Christ. But they didn't know exactly where to go. And so they called in to the palace to King Herod. And they were hoping to get information from him. And King Herod pretended like he too was interested. He even said that, he wanted to worship him. Be sure you come back and let me know so I can go worship him too. Uh, he didn't plan to worship at all. He planned to exterminate. He had previously killed his wife, Miriamne. He'd killed two of his sons. Any rival to the throne he took care of. And he was aware of the prophecies from the Old Testament, though he himself was not a Jew. He was aware. There was a Messiah who would come, and this might be the one, and he would get rid of the Messiah. Herod plotted. He plotted. He turned to the religious scholars, and Lim read this for us, and asked them, and they knew the answer. They quoted from Micah 5, 2 that Messiah, the Christ, would be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was about eight k's down the road. These scholars knew the answer. But tell me, did any of them go to Bethlehem? They knew the right answers. But they did not go to Jesus Christ. They did not go seeking their Messiah. And later on, Scribes, Pharisees, scholars would be the ones stirring up the crowd to cry out, crucify him. And we have no king but Caesar. Frankincense. Frankincense speaks of sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus came to make atonement for you and me. It was a silent night, a holy night when he was born. But he knew before he came what his mission was. And praise God for that mission. For apart from him, you and I have no hope. But in him, we have complete hope. We know that we may be forgiven, we may be cleansed, we may have eternal life because of the sacrifice he made. That's what the frankincense symbolizes. Will you sing Silent Night with me? <laughs>
I don't know if any of the boys and girls can hear me back there, but if any of them can, they can come out and sing this one with us, Away in the Manger. Let's sing it. That's a big help. Really enjoyed you coming and joining us on that song. Now we can rest and enjoy Dex and Lisa singing for us. We're very grateful to Dex and Lisa. Dex is here as an intern this year and is doing a marvelous work. Uh, we enjoy his preaching and Dex and Lisa, their visitation and, and all the rest that they do. They also sing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Dex and Lisa, would you come and sing for us? I'd be better with it. Yes, yes. Celebrate. 
great. What can be the reason for this special Christmas season without the greatest gift the Heavenly Father ever gave? What is Christmas without Jesus and without Him? What would Christmas be without the Holy Savior's birth? There would be no peace on earth. So to Christmas, Christ is everything, everything, Jesus. I'm reading to you from Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 to 13. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Jesus was born to die. God loved the world so much he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came with that mission. This is a newer carol we're going to sing, but it tells the story so well, born to die. Change for 
got my good buddy Asher back there. I know he knows the answer to this. The gifts from the wise men, gold, frankincense, and myrrh? That's right. That's right. You got it. You got it. Thank you so much, Asher. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Do you know what myrrh was used for? Myrrh was used in burial. When Jesus died his body was taken down, and he was wrapped in burial cloths. And that, those burial cloths had spices put in them, also to help seal. And then he was placed into a borrowed tomb, the tomb belonging to Joseph of Arimathea. And a stone was rolled in front of that tomb, and that stone was sealed that no one would tamper with it. And a Roman guard was stationed outside of it. And three days later, what happened? That's right. That's right, Asher. That's what happened. The stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty because Jesus was risen from the dead. It is the best news story. Jesus atoned for our sin and he is alive forevermore. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And your response should mirror that of the wise men. The wise men, as Martin read to us, when they met Jesus Christ, though he was just a little child, a toddler, they bowed down before him and they worshiped him. They worshiped him. Now to worship anyone or anything other than God is blasphemy, sacrilege, but this was no blasphemy, no sacrilege because Jesus is God. It's the right thing to do. They worshiped him. And then they presented themselves to him in the form of those gifts. And we too are to offer our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service or our reasonable worship. He's given all for us. Let's not reserve anything from him. There are three characters in Matthew chapter 2. Herod, who plotted he did not go to worship Jesus. He did not go to serve Jesus. He wanted to kill Jesus and in fact, tragically, had all of the two-year-old and under murdered in that vicinity. The scholars, the scribes, the Pharisees, they knew the answer. They knew the scripture. They knew in Bethlehem that's where the Messiah would be. But none of them went to him. 
You see, the difference between knowing in your head and receiving in your heart is the difference between heaven and hell. Have you received Jesus in your heart? Have you gone to him? You, you might know the story. You may have gone to Sunday school when you were a child. But have you received Jesus Christ? The Bible gives this invitation. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Some people say, that's too simple. There must be something I have to do. No, no, that would be an insult because Jesus already did it. He already did it all. And there's really nothing we can do to make up for our sin. We receive what he's already done for us. Have you received Christ? Let's be like the wise men. Let's go to him. Go to him. He invites, come unto me, all ye who are weak and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come to Jesus. Believe in him. Receive him. For the scripture assures, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. This is the good news and the greatest gift of all. This next carol we're going to sing is my personal favorite. What child is this? The, the reason I love this carol so much is because each of the three verses comes from a different gospel in the New Testament. The first verse comes from the gospel of Luke. And so we hear about the, the, uh, the angels and the shepherds. The second verse comes from the gospel of John. And we hear about the cross and the sacrifice. And then the third verse comes from the Gospel of Matthew, which we've looked at here. And it speaks about our reasonable response, just like the wise men, to bring him ourselves as a gift. Let's sing this carol together. Yeah. 
at this time of year, it's customary to exchange gifts. And that's a wonderful part of this season. It honors the fact that God gave the first gift and the best gift. He gave his son. Now with gift giving, someone has to pay for the gift and someone has to receive the gift. If a gift is presented and it's not received, then it doesn't ever belong to the person it was intended to be given to. A gift has to be received. Now, Asha, when a gift is presented to you, do you knock it back or do you open it up and, and enjoy what it is? Yeah, that's right. The greatest gift of all, the gift of God, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's been paid for. It would be an insult if you presented a gift to someone and they got out their, their handbag or, or their wallet and tried to pay you for it. You'd feel insulted, wouldn't you? Because it's already paid for. And it's the same way. Jesus Christ has already paid for forgiveness, for cleansing, for eternal life, and it's offered as a gift, but you must receive. How do we receive this gift? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Have you received the greatest gift of all? If not, how about today? It's offered. It's presented. Won't you go to Jesus? Won't you receive him? I'd like to ask Dex and Lisa to come again and to sing another song. What can I give to the king? Give to the king. 
Give to the one who has everything. What can I give? What gift can I bring? What can I give to the King? What can I give to the King? Thank you, Dex and Lisa, and thank all of you. You are a marvelous choir. Maybe next year we'll get all of you up in the front here and to sing. Well, we've come to the last Christmas carol, and this one sums up the entire theme of this afternoon. We three kings, and I want you to pay attention to each one of the verses, because after stating the theme in verse one, verse two is about the gold and what the gold means, Verse three is about the frankincense and what the frankincense means. And verse four is about the myrrh and what that means. And then verse five is the triumphant verse because Jesus, our savior, is alive. Let's sing, We Three Kings. Oh 
I'd like to thank Pastor Steve for leading us today. It's been wonderful. Thank you, Pastor Steve. And, and for Steve's wife, Sue, and daughter, Shelby, for leading us in the piano. And Kai. And Kai on the uh, computer work there. Wonderful Kai. And for Dex and Lisa uh, giving us your two items. Wonderful. Wonderful. And how good was the choir? Mm -hmm. They were wonderful. Fantastic. That, that practice really per makes perfect. But most of all, we give all praise to our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise God for him. We're going to close off our carol service now with a benediction. And I'm going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church and by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 And if you're able to uh, stay for a barbecue, uh, Brett and uh, Todd have been out there on the barbecue, so please stay and have some fellowship and some good barbecue food for praise God.